Hello everyone, Neof is here, and welcome back to my short series showing off the worlds that I created before I started recording in Minecraft. And this is the fourth world that I had done. I did this world, uh, I had been a few months playing Minecraft now, and I figured I had myself really, uh knowledgeable on how the game works and everything <clears throat> and so I spent a great deal of time in this particular world so let's check it out I started out let's get in the right view here I started out with a little hidey hole down in here <laughs> It was, uh, you know how it is. You start out, you need shelter, you gotta stay safe and whatnot. Dug down, went down, gathered resources, and uh, eventually started getting established. I think I ended up going over that way and creating another hidey hole before I start, built that over there. And uh, this, this particular world's gonna take a few episodes to show because it's rather large. I uh, built this little shelter over here, but that wasn't the first thing I did. Actually, uh, first thing I did was way over this way here. <clears throat> There's quite a bit to show here, so I'm trying to see if I can get it all into like chronological order. So that uh, this walkway was something that got done just recently. So, this shelter was sitting out in the middle of nowhere, uh, and the reason it was here was because over here I had discovered a spider spawner. So, I made uh, a bit of use of this uh, to get some experience and to uh, close the door, don't want any riffraff in. Get some experience and get leveled up a little bit. And this was very basic and simple. I just sort of set this as sit here, protected behind the glass, keep swatting them. Uh, partly to get experience and partly to get spring string for making bows. But uh, oh yeah, the sound can annoy you. That's for sure. So I had it closed off as best I could uh, to try and keep the mobs out. And uh, that lasted for a little bit, and I kept running back to the shelter here in the in the uh, night time to sleep it off and and uh, uh, be prepared for the next day. But very shortly, I realized that over here I had a ravine, and this is what turned into something major. In a very short period of time, I had dug out this ravine and turned it into a habitat and this was my big major project here I had spent I don't know probably at least a couple of months of fiddling around with this because it was originally just a ravine that went on an angle from way over at that corner to way over at this corner and I kept widening it and widening it widening it until it turned into this big huge habitat that I have now so you can see I've got all kinds of stuff going on here. This was where these torches and poles are. This was originally the pig farm. But I eventually decided to set them free. Because I figured, oh, they can't get out of here anyway. <laughs> and way over this way. This set of torches with poles was originally my uh, uh, cow farm. And once again, I decided to set them free too. Uh, I did tree farming in here, as you can see. It uh, for getting my wood. I figured out how to get the mushrooms growing in in big style. I once again did this cactus farm, but never actually made use of it. And even to this day, I don't have a lot of use for cactus. I guess at one time it was a great thing for killing mobs and stuff. And I guess if you're making a, a, a machine for killing chickens, then this is useful because they can't get past it. If you put them close enough, then the chickens sort of can't get by them without dying. 
I uh, made snow golems, eventually realized that this was a good thing, and I could just sit here and, and, uh, oops. <laughs> oops. <laughs> well, I guess things have changed a little bit. <laughs> this is the 1.5.1 patch now, so I'm not sure why that happened. <laughs> Where did the guy go? I didn't hit him. At least I don't recall hitting him. But, uh, uh. I was making snow like there was no tomorrow here, but I don't even know why, because the, the snow isn't that useful. There are some uses for it, though. Uh, over here, this was a nifty experiment I did where I first discovered how to make a sliding piston door. And that's this is where I experimented on that creation, until eventually I, I built a, a storage room that was... Uh, uh, using that kind of a piston door, right? At one time, this was the inner wall to this ravine that I'm inside of here. And, uh, right up in here was my little home. And I had the bed up here, I had some storage up here, all was good. I eventually realized that almost directly below here, there was a, a skeleton spawner, so I built this, uh, contraption here to uh, uh, farm those skeletons. Let's see, I think this was the way down into there. Yeah, and the, the livestock keep wanting to come down in here. Yeah, so I, uh, I think it started out that this was a, a different design completely, and then I modified it to be like this. Uh, I had learned uh, from a tutorial online about how to uh, uh, set it up this way and this was still back in the 1.2.5 days where they would go up and get knocked off they'd land down here you'd hop on to you'd beat the beat them up here then you'd get this piston to push all their goods forward so that worked out kind of nicely let's see if we can get one to come down so we can show you there see it pushes them over the edge takes a few of them. I think you got to have at least two up there, and then the third one pushes one of them off the edge, just like that, right? So, the only thing is, is if you stand too close, they'll start hitting you with the arrows. But I didn't even need the sword. I think I could hit them with just, yeah, my fist. See that? They keep glitching. Yeah. <laughs> That's just brutal, eh? 1.2.5 didn't have these kinds of glitches, <clears throat> but once we went to 1.3 is when it all started, and we had to devise d other ways of dealing with it. But, oh, he finally did fall, so I can give him a good whack again. Yeah. And see, I can't reach it, but I can get the piston to push it to me. Oh, wait. Oh, there we are. And if they stand back too far for me to hit them, then the piston pushes them forward as well. So that was kind of okay. Get back out of here. There's a lot more to show off here. Like I say, this is going to take a few episodes. And here was this... Ooh. I discovered a mine shaft down in here. And it cut, this cut right down into it. And you can't see much of any of it now, because I went through and just basically... Uh, cleaned it out. Any any uh, rails and, and wood uh, support structures that were in here have long since been removed. And I got lost more than enough time. Oh, you can see some remnants down there of the wood that's left behind. But this was a very complicated mine shaft and I kept getting lost in it. But I just kept on clearing out the wood and whatnot and... and uh, it was okay because uh, it could get down nice and deep and enable me to get diamonds and whatnot. So this was uh, quite the adventure <coughs> dealing with this. Yeah, you can see this is shaped like a mine shaft here, the right dimensions and whatnot. <coughs> okay, let's see if we can find our way out. Oh, I think it's this way, yeah. Yeah, so, that was that kind of goodness there. 
And I had lots of signs. Yeah, it was a very deep nut mine there. And here I had it labeled. So this was the skeleton for harvesting bones and, and arrows. And uh, like I say, I originally had it set up in a very basic way. So this was the edge of it all. And I slowly started tunneling in more and more and digging it out more and more. And right here is where I put my portal into the nether. I'll show you that on a in a future episode because there's just too much to show so I have to spread this out it's gonna take way too long to show you everything that was that went on in this world so yeah you can see here we had our our wheat farm we had our pumpkin and melon farm um, I uh, put the the chicken all behind glass here like this because I had tamed some ocelots and read that the cats would uh, randomly attack and kill your chickens and I didn't want them to do that so I basically just uh, uh, put them behind the glass so the cats couldn't get to them but this here was my main storage area so this is the first time I built a real storage area and you can see I set up this uh, piston door here that uh, worked very nicely. It's very quick. I can literally just run through here and it doesn't slow me down at all. And I gotta run. I can't be slow or it's gonna close up on me. So you can see here, this was my main storage area. And this was, I thought this was just great. Everything organized and labeled nicely. This was before we had item frames that you could put up to keep it labeled. So I just used blocks under the chest to show what was in them. And you can see a lot of cobble and earth was being stored because when I was digging out this whole uh, ravine, a lot of earth and cobble came out of it. Here we have our waste garbage disposal unit. So anything I didn't want, I just threw it into the fire. You can see I had lots of uh, furnaces for cooking stuff because I ended up uh, making a lot of smooth stone and, and stone bricks. I liked having the smooth stone in here, but at the time the texture pack I was using had a nicer design, but they've changed it, and I'm not as fond of this as I used to be. This little room back in here was kind of like my little redstone experiment room, where I would conduct experiments with the redstone. And what, what mu music do we have here? Ah, oh, the cat. Yeah, I like the cat. That's probably the best tune out of the bunch. So yeah, I, I uh, uh, made extensive use of, of redstone in this particular world because I was getting pretty comfortable. Here we have, once again, the cobblestone generator. We go down, uh, I think I've gone to better designs than this now, but uh, this was my first one with the basic clock spinning around to do its thing. And this went uh, back down into the caves and whatnot. Uh, I did a lot of caving in this uh, world. Uh, it uh, for getting diamonds and gold and iron and whatnot and I ended up getting a pretty good supply going I'll quickly show you here this yeah, so this this worked pretty good but you can see it's a little bit slow eh? it takes a bit of time for this to pop so you know I got involved with uh, better worlds afterwards where uh, instead of having just one here, I think I had it set so I'd have four of them so that I could just keep whacking like crazy and it would never, uh, uh, I'd never have to wait. If anything, it was a challenge to keep up with it when there was four of them there. But, uh, yeah, so that's how that one works and it works rather nicely. Uh, instead of, when I got to the point where I was getting short on cobble, that's, that was nice to have instead of, you know, always tunneling to get more cobble, right? And oh geez, I don't know, those chickens start to bug me after a while. But you can see this was a really cool thing. I had all kinds of exits out of here that led to one thing or another. I should have slept to turn it into nighttime, or daytime, but... We'll come way back into this corner first. And up we go. And this was the exit I had that, that led off into the snow biome. And being the 1.2.5, you still couldn't harvest ice, so I never actually made an ice machine. But every place you see a pillar, uh, 
usually was a point that I popped up out of the ground when I got lost caving. So I would just tunnel straight up when I was lost and then leave a pillar there to uh, let myself know that I've been at that spot and I could go back down if I wanted to explore more. Same thing uh, over at this one here. Uh, I believe this one, I think, took me back to that spider spawner. Yeah, this took me to the spider spawner. To, I eventually tunneled in, in here to the spider spawner. Looks like somebody wants in. <laughs> yeah, he wants in. You get him. There you go. Oh, it's becoming daytime. Yay. Well, maybe because it's coming daytime, we'll come out and I'll show you. Boy, there was a bunch of them hanging out there, eh? Oh, wow, I didn't know that them on fire was going to catch me on fire. <laughs> Any other guys out here? Like the fuzzy guys? Jeez. <laughs> yeah, so uh, eventually I decided that the ravine was kind of dangerous with it being open, because it was an open ravine. So I come up here and I covered it with glass. Neat, eh? So I could run around here and check it all out. And then I decided that this area up here would have been a great spot for a tree farm. So obviously, that's what I did. I planted trees. And that kept the light out so that I could grow the mushrooms down there. And it wasn't until I planted all these trees that I was able to grow mushrooms down there. And that worked out okay, too. Boy, there's just too much to show in here. Um, let's go back down inside here again. Because, as you can see, that was another exit out of the whole thing. And down here, there's a secret hideout in the monster lava pit. And basically, this was a spot where I had done uh, some very serious branch mining to get diamonds and whatnot. And it, it was a multiple uh, excursion, you can see. A few exits here and there until finally I got down into this what I refer to as the secret hideout that I was in and Over in here. I, I did some obsidian mining because I needed it for various reasons and I had branched off in different directions here doing uh, So you can see down here's the tunnel that was the serious branch mine where I just kept going and going yeah, and there was more at the end of that one there. So, yeah, I kept going and going. That goes like pfft, what seems like forever down that way. So I'm not going to uh, bore you with that too much. But, uh, and this was when where I eventually, uh, originally discovered this spot. I would come down through here. So I spent more than enough time getting lost down in all of these caves and having to refine my way out. And that's why I have a lot of signs and whatnot in, in this world letting me know what's what and where to get where because it became so complicated. Yee But we better quickly move on or we're not going to be able to show much. Okay, so that's almost it. Uh, I'm going to take a quick shortcut because that's what this turned into. This was my nether portal, but then... I found out that how nether portals work in this world, and it was kind of bizarre. So here's my shelter in the nether portal. We'll quickly go back to find that it doesn't take me back where I came from. And that's what surprised me, is that I have this other uh, building. When we first started, uh, I pointed off in that direction, and you could see it. I was standing way over there when I first started this and you can see I had this wild building here which was kind of neat and a uh, nice stairway going down and I'll quickly show you that this here was one of my original hidey holes once again and I found out this went way down deep and that had me quite nervous at first because it was really dark and I think right here was the fir the original entrance and exit that I covered it over yeah, 
right over here was the original en entrance and exit. I built this platform mostly for tree farming. Boy, yeah, there's just so much to show here because at one time I had went venturing off in this direction here um, and that's where I, the jungle is off that way and that's where I got the ocelots from that, that were tamed to be cats. And you can see this uh, uh, bridging that I have way up in the air that's traveling all over the place. And I used that to uh, do some fast travel in minecarts because this was the first time I really started making extensive use of minecarts. So this building I've got here is where I set up my enchanting table. And this is, like I say, this was 1.2.5 when you needed uh, 30 bookshelves to get to level 50. And I was thinking about putting fencing around this, and I thought, nah, I don't need fencing. So I just sort of set it this way so it's easier to see over the edge and whatnot. And I thought that was a neat structure there, and that's partly why I built this bridge to get there using minecarts. I don't think I have a minecart on me, though, to go traveling that way. And it's a long journey anyway, but we'll continue on. Up, 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 up. And here's where my uh, potion brewing area is. And it looks like I actually did some potion brewing. Yay! This was the first time I set up a potion brewing area and used it. So, <laughs> once again, lookout platform. It was kind of nice. Could look out all around. Oh, and this is uh, where I could actually get onto uh that track the, there was a track here originally but i removed it but you can see yeah tracks here let's go this way to get up hope i don't fall because <laughs> i can more than easily fall i've done that enough times up here that's for sure yeehaw and I did have track going this way as well. But uh, I didn't get involved enough for automatic switching and whatnot. So uh, I uh, removed that track because I couldn't get it to automatically take me that way. But if I follow that track, that takes me back to the ravine. And when I followed the track this way, not only did it take me to that jungle biome I mentioned where I got the ocelots, but it went way, way, way off up to a, a, a new land completely uh, that was uh, actually uh, was a snow biome, and I built a shelter out there as well. I might show you that, but not, not right at the moment. You can see here, I think I was uh, this was a design that I was uh, following of somebody else's, and it worked out okay too. It's kind of, I don't know, I, I thought the view was a little bit limited, so I never really come up here that much. And, actually, let's, uh, no, let's go back up. Yeehaw. Try not to get dizzy. And I'm going to run this instead of uh, a cart, because I don't think I have a cart on me anyway. This is just a short run anyway. So you can see there was a strange building I built here up in the air. And I thought, well, this might be a neat train station tower that I set up, but I never really completed it. But from up here, you can see I've got more of these towers all around. And uh, <clears throat> it wasn't in this direction. It was actually back in that direction. I ended up sailing until I found a desert island, and on that desert island, there was a uh, uh, a village that I had uh, uh, discovered and worked with quite a bit, and I'll show you that in another episode. Uh, so yeah, this was, you know, just went up, 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 never really went anywhere, but uh, it, it was kind of fun building this for the first time as well. I was uh, into getting these double spiral scare staircases going up and I think I'm getting away from that. I think I like single staircases or minecart uh, elevators better now because they're the faster way to do things. 
Yeehaw. So yeah, it spent lots of time with this. This was this was a lot of fun building this one. Especially uh, you know, this uh uh ravine that I had dug all out to create a habitat and it sure was uh it was my nice big home, that's for sure. This was Neophys's home for quite some time. I don't know, I think I spent three or four months with this world. This was the one I spent the most time with. But I think that should just about do it for this episode because it's running long. So we're going to cut it off now and we're going to go to a part two where we show the nether the next time round. And then eventually we'll get to part three where I show where those mine tracks go and the, the uh, uh, village that I had worked with. So I hope you enjoyed watching this and y'all take care now and till next time, this is Neophys signing out.